God and the big engine was feeling dreadful. His tubes were stuffed up, his joints ached, and he spewed black smoke as he limped along. The other engines were becoming very concerned. Gordon insisted he was fine, but his terrible cough told another story. <coughs> Are you okay, Gordon? You sound even worse than yesterday. I just need another cleaning, Henry. That's all. After that, I'll be good as new. But you just had one last week, Gordon. Cleanings used to be yearly for you. What changed? Nothing has changed. I've always gone for frequent cleanings. Not everyone rambles on about their private checkups like you do. It's vulgar. But Gordon was lying. Something was wrong. And he didn't know what. His friends all begged him to go to the works, but he wouldn't do it. He assured them that another quick cleaning at the sheds would be enough. But one day Gordon heard that Spencer was coming for a visit, and everything changed. I don't want Spencer to see me like this. You know what that insufferable twit would say. This would prove everything to him. Prove what, Gordon? Why, that I'm the inferior class of engine. Spencer is convinced that his class was Sir Nigel Gresley's crowning achievement. But he's deluded. Gresley took far more pride in us A1s and A3s. We were the pinnacle. You don't much look like the pinnacle. Well, I am. But all Spencer will see is dirt and grime, coughs and wheezes. Meanwhile, he makes his grand entrance with the Duke and Duchess... Trumpets blaring, red carpet rolling out, and his special coach behind him. I'll look like an utter mongrel, and he'll be sure to point it out. Just then, Spencer's whistle blared in the distance as the big silver engine strode into the yard. But when he came to a stop, Gordon was shocked to see that the special coach was nowhere to be found. Spencer? Where's your coach? Don't tell me you've left the Duke and Duchess behind. Don't be daft, Gordon. I'd never be so careless. Truth is, I'm not here on business. This is a social call. You've come here of your own volition. Unusual. Well, we're under unusual circumstances. Tell me, Gordon, have you been experiencing pain in your steam chests? Maybe shortness of breath? Clunking in your firebox? What in the... How could you know all that? Because it's all happening to me too. Spencer, slow down. I still don't understand. What do you mean by design flaw? Just shut up and follow me, Gordon. It's best you hear it from a professional. To Gordon's dismay, Spencer had dragged him to the works. He hated being examined, but he needed to know what this was all about. Every gauge, valve and tube in Gordon's body was scrutinised by engineers, and one by one their expressions turned grim. One of them whispered something to Victor. Gordon was getting nervous. Victor, what's wrong with me? Why is everyone so sullen? Gordon, my friend. You may want to prepare yourself. Out with it, Victor. Your steam pipes, your tubes, your chest. Everything is wearing out. That's why you've been struggling so much lately. Hmm. That's it? So what if my tubes are a little worn out? I have a Gresley boiler. Whatever damage there is, I can make up for it. But Gordon, that's just it. Your high pressure boiler is what did this to you. I... I... What? 
Your boiler is too powerful. It worn down the rest of your body long before its natural end. Maybe a few decades ago I could have replaced the parts, but now everything has been affected. So now what? You should survive it. You may not be as strong as you once were, but you're still a capable engine. However, you will get slower and slower, and before long, you won't be able to pull the express anymore. In my professional opinion, you should have two or three good years left before your career as an express engine is over. I'm so sorry, Gordon. Grizzly made a mistake giving you such a large boiler. It was too much. I wish I could do more. Honestly, I wish I could. I told you, a crippling design flaw. We've been carrying expiration dates the moment we received these boilers back in the 30s. How? How could Gresley let your ridiculous design interfere with my well-being? What? You think this is our fault? Yes. You overachieving A4 set the bar too high. The only reason Gresley gave us A3's high-pressure boilers was to keep up with you. Nonsense! You slacker A3s weren't pulling your weight, so Gresley had no choice but to push us A4s to our limit instead. And he never would have had to if your class hadn't been so lazy. Neither side was going to budge. Each believed that the other had forced Gresley's hand. The question is, which of our classes drove Gresley to crank up the pressure? Yours? Or mine? Well, there's only one way to find out for sure. Where are you going? Where else? Doncaster! Someone must have answers! A cross-country journey? That will take ages. Don't you need to get back to the Duke and Duchess? No, Gordon. I don't. What? Why ever not? Because they fired me. Spencer, I... I didn't know. I live at the National Railway Museum now. My career is already over, Gordon. I suggest you stay here and enjoy the rest of yours while you still can. Gordon thought for a moment. Every minute he had left with the Express was now precious, but despite his disdain for Spencer, it didn't feel right to let him go to Doncaster all on his own. No, Spencer. I'm coming with you. Whichever one of our classes has doomed us, I want to find out together. Very well then. You've got one hour to talk to your controller. Meet me at Barrow in Furness. So Gordon did talk to the Fat Controller. He spared the more painful details, but Sir Topham Hatt could see that this was important. He cleared Gordon's schedule and even called ahead to Doncaster. An expert would be waiting to meet the two engines when they arrived and give them the full story. Well, well, you're actually looking half decent. Victor had my tubes cleaned out. He's been doing it once a week or so. It won't last, but regular maintenance will keep me on the express a few more years. I wish the Duke and Duchess had been that generous. The moment my speed started to slip, they kicked me to the curb. I won't miss your incessant bragging about being a private engine, but... You gave them years of good service. They should have been kinder to you. 
Oh, spare me the pity. Just two fewer people to trust. Now I'm down to just... one. Come on, our time is short. So they set out for Doncaster. No coaches, no cargo, only two cousins on a journey home to learn the truth about their condition. The journey was long and tiring. The works had cleared Gordon's tubes well and Spencer had been given excellent care at the National Railway Museum. But halfway through the journey, they could feel their systems clogging up again. They kept on. But all the while the thought loomed over them that long distance journeys would soon be a thing of the past. They couldn't help but argue. Gordon still insisted that the A4s were responsible for Gresley's desperate decision and Spencer was still certain that if not for the A3's laziness, Gresley would never have made the fatal error. They fought and fought, but all it did was make them tired. When the two engines finally saw Doncaster come into view, they were wheezing badly. They were relieved when they finally stopped in a siding, Ugh, oh, the indignity. I'm totally exhausted, and we weren't even hauling anything. I can't believe that a measly argument can leave me so out of breath. That's just about the only thing we can agree on. In my youth, I wouldn't even have broken a sweat. Humiliating. As the two engines bemoaned their lack of stamina, they noticed a quite dignified-looking old man pacing slowly toward them. Gordon and Spencer grew excited. He came to a halt in front of the two engines and looked them up and down. His focused gaze was that of a man who knew every rod, rivet and tube like the back of his hand. This had to be the expert Sir Topham Hatt had mentioned. Amazing! I never expected to see engines like you again. But I owed your controller a favor, so I made the trip down. His controller, you mean? I'm privately owned. Publicly, you mean? My name is Franklin Ford. I worked for Sir Nigel Gresley as an assistant. That was many years ago. Now tell me, what do you want to know? Sir, my cousin and I have recently discovered a design flaw in both of our classes. Our high-pressure boilers have proven too powerful. Our tubes, pipes, steam chests, they're wearing out. And we would just like to know, sir. What drove Sir Nigel to make such a terrible oversight? Was he too focused on bringing us A3s up to speed with the A4s? Or was he overcompensating for the failings of the A3s? Mr. Ford stood there in silence for several seconds. He was unsure what to say. At last, he spoke. There was no oversight. He knew you would wear out sooner or later, but the high-pressure boilers were worth it. He never expected you to last this long. What? No, no, that... Can't be. The A4s must have made him lose sight of his goals, uh, made him push us too far. The A4s didn't make him do anything. I know. I was there. Gresley knew full well that you would both wear out over time. He wasn't blinded by a need to speed up the A3s or push the boundaries of speed with the A4s. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew that one day, you would both expire. But, sir, who do we have to blame? Well, I suppose you should blame Gresley. 
The truth is, he didn't need you to last forever. Thirty years is the natural life expectancy of a steam engine. You two have lived eighty. He wasn't ignorant to either of your flaws. He knew that you would both break down eventually. He just didn't care. I... 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 I can't believe this. He... He knew we were flawed the whole time. And... He left us to our fates anyway. Well, what did you expect? To live forever? Sorry to burst your bubble, but that's not how life works. There's a reason you had to come all the way to Doncaster to talk to me. I'm 85 years old. Just walking down to this yard was a trek. People grow old, wear out. Why not engines, too? Face it, you're mortal, both of you, just like the rest of us. With that, the old man hobbled slowly away, leaving Gordon and Spencer at a loss for words. This wasn't the answer either of them wanted, as they gazed up at the grand and towering Doncaster works, the crowning jewel of the LNER, they didn't feel pride or wonder any more. Instead, they only felt betrayal. They had both been fools. Well then, there's our answer. Two express engines, our abilities ripped away from us, our careers destroyed, and dear old Gresley planned it all along. And now, I don't trust anyone at all. I suppose I should be getting home then. Yes, and I'd best get back to the National Railway Museum. You know, Gordon, I know I've crushed your spirits many times over the years, but today, today, I'm not happy about it. Not happy at all. Farewell, cousin. Spencer, wait. What is it, Gordon? G Good luck at the National Railway Museum. You'll make a very decent exhibit. Th thank you, Gordon. Good luck to you as well. Enjoy your express while you still have it. I'm sure you'll give tolerable service for a few years more. Take care. As Spencer blew his whistle and departed for York, Gordon was left gazing up at the enormous workshop the place that built him all those years ago. He didn't feel much of anything for it now. That Doncaster pride he had once felt, it had vanished. But something new and strange had replaced it. He wasn't quite sure what it was yet, but it wasn't the worst feeling. Gordon took one last good look at his old home, and once he was finally ready, he left it behind at last.